So check this out. Recently, I performed a poll on my YouTube channel and I asked the audience, if you use Microsoft Excel, what is your current state with the data analysis tool pack? And I expected the number to be kind of high regarding how many people weren't using the analysis tool pack in Excel, but even I was shocked by the results. So check this out. So 54% of the respondents said, what's the analysis tool pack? Meaning they had no idea what it was in the first place. 54%. Microsoft, if you're an Excel PM and you're watching this, make note of this. Next up, if you add in 16% of people that said, look, it's on my to learn list. Hey Dave, I'm, I wanna learn how to use the data analysis tool pack. That bumps it up to 70%. 70%. And then lastly, if you throw in a third group that says, hey Dave, I tried out the analysis tool pack, but I don't really use it. That bumps the percentage up to 86%. 86% of respondents use Excel, but don't use the analysis tool pack. And to be honest with you, I was flabbergasted by this because the analysis tool pack is awesome. I use it all the time. And in this short video, I'm gonna give you my top three reasons why you should be using the analysis tool pack in Excel if you analyze data. Okay, since fully 70% of people on my poll responded with either, I don't know what the data analysis tool pack is, or it's on my to learn list, the first thing I wanna do is show you how easy it is to enable the data analysis tool pack add-in. So here I am in trusty handy Excel, and what we want to do is go up to file over here and click on file. And then what we wanna do is go down to options here at the very bottom, options. Click on that, and that's gonna bring up the Excel options dialog. And what we want to do is check out the add-ins right here, the add-ins, click on that. And we want to manage the Excel add-ins. That's the default here on the dropdown. If you click it, you can see there's some other ones here, but we want the Excel add-ins, and we click go. And that brings up another dialog here. And what we can see is we want the analysis tool pack. We want that bad boy. Now, in a subsequent video later on, I'm gonna talk about the solver because I did a poll on the solver and people aren't using the solver as much as they should, by the way. So we'll talk about that one later. So we check the analysis tool pack and we click okay. And that gives us the power of data analysis right here. So if we click on the data ribbon and we scroll all the way over here, we now have an analysis section in the data ribbon and we have the data analysis tool pack. So I'm not gonna actually go through how to do these things that I'm gonna talk about in this video. What I will do is I will give you links in the description below this video to other videos on my channel, which go into more detail about the things I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So this is gonna be a very quick summary kind of video. But now you got the data analysis tool pack enabled, so you're good to go. So first up is we're gonna talk about descriptive statistics. This is a piece of functionality in the analysis tool pack, and it is awesome. I use it all the time. When I have a column of numeric data, and I just wanna get some sort of high level understanding of what's going on with the numbers. As the example I'm gonna show you real quick, I've got a famous machine learning data set here. These rows of data belong to Titanic passengers, but don't think of it as a fancy machine learning data set. This could be customer data, for example, coming out of your CRM system. And what I really wanna show you is the output of the descriptive statistics functionality in the analysis tool pack. And what I've done here is I've run the descriptive statistics functionality on three columns of numeric data in the table, passenger ID, P class, and age. And what you can see here is you get awesome summary statistics about what's going on in the data. So for example, check this out. Passenger ID, as the name indicates, this is an identifier column. So every cell in this column is a unique number. So from an analytical perspective, this isn't a very good column of data. However, even if you didn't realize the passenger ID was in fact an identifier column, the summary statistics will provide you a lot of insights into why that might be the case. First up, notice that you've got no mode, which means that no number is repeated. Every number is unique. That's a big red flag that this might be a passenger ID column. And not only that, you can see here that the minimum value is one, the maximum value is 891. That in of itself isn't necessarily particularly indicative, but what is interesting here is that the mean and the median are exactly the same at 446. So if you have no mode and the mean and the median are the same, that's a pretty good indication that there's something funky going on in this data. Not only that, but the maximum value is 891, and there's also 890 
one rows total, which is another big indicator, right? So descriptive statistics are wildly awesome for helping you identify this situation, but there's more. So what we can see here is, look at the age column here. The age column summary statistics are awesome. Because first up, we can see here that passenger injury ID said there's 891 individual values, 891 rows of data. But notice that the first thing we notice here in the age descriptive statistics is that there are only 714 values, which tells us we're missing well over 100. Like, what are we missing, like 177? Next up, we can say, hey, what's the minimum age? The minimum age is 0.42 years old. Maximum age is 80. The average age is 29.699. And the median is 28, which is a little bit lower, which tells us that it's a little bit skewed. We have some of these higher folks probably pulling up the average, the mean age, because mean means the same thing as average, no pun intended. And we can see here the mode, the most frequently occurring value is 24. And there's a whole bunch of goodness here. So summary statistics are awesome. Now you can do this all yourself, of course, writing Excel code by hand, right? You can just use formulas and cells and do this, but why? If you've got the analysis tool pack, you just do a few clicks in the graphical user interface and you're off and running. And as I said, if you wanna learn more, check out the links to videos on my channel in the description below. Next up, correlation analysis. Now, if you're not familiar with correlation, this is a type of mathematical calculation that embodies a relationship between two numeric columns of data and it evaluates a linear relationship. The value of correlation, real quickly, goes from negative one to one. And what you're looking for, usually when you're doing a correlation analysis, is something close to negative one or close to one, because that implies a high level of correlation, either positive or negative, you don't usually care, you're just interested in understanding how much correlation exists. And once again, doing a correlation analysis with the analysis tool pack is wildly useful. You can use out of the box Excel functions to do this, but why? Why not just use the analysis tool pack? And it's easy to create this thing right here, which is known as a correlation matrix. And this data is from another famous machine learning data set, which holds flower data for iris flowers. We don't need to talk about that, but I just wanna show you, for example, look at this. The correlation between petal length and petal width is 0.96 which in terms of a data analysis scenario is super, super interesting. What this tells you is that these two things are highly predictive of each other. So if you're doing any sort of predictive analytics or really trying to understand what's going on in the business in terms of high levels of association, correlation analysis is a super, super awesome technique for you to use. Lastly, and real quick, we're gonna take a look at linear regression analysis. Now, I can't drain this because there's a lot going on. Just know this, the analysis tool pack makes doing linear regression analysis in Excel super, super easy. It handles all the math for you so that you just need to focus on learning the concepts of applying linear regression to your data. Anybody can learn how to do this. I teach professionals at national conferences how to do this in Excel all the time, and they have all kinds of backgrounds, so you can totally do this, but check this out. This particular scenario is analyzing sales as the result of digital advertising spin on Google ads, Facebook ads, and the interaction of Google Facebook ads. And what you can do is you can get this output right here from the analysis tool pack with just a few clicks. It is so awesome. Once again, yes, you can do all of this using out of the box Excel functions, but it's kind of a pain to be absolutely honest with you. And the analysis tool pack allows you to conduct these analyses quickly and easily and ascertain things like hey, based on the data, for every $1 that we spend on Google and Facebook ads at the same time in the same city, we make $1.8.6 in sales. So we get a return of a little over 8.6%. That's awesome. I mean, if you look at your data and you figure this stuff out, you're like, look, dude, we should just keep pumping more and more money into our Google and Facebook ads because what our data is showing us is that this is highly effective. There you have it, my top three reasons why you should be using Excel's data analysis tool pack. Now, if you're interested in learning more, I'll put up a couple of my videos here and here on my channel, which show you how to actually use the analysis tool pack in practice. And if you found this video useful, if you think other professionals would benefit from this, if you could just smash that like button and help me out with the YouTube algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.